Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello everyone. This is Mr. Samak, teacher of English for grade 5. Today, inshallah, we're going to start a new lesson. Are you ready? But please, before that, please bring your books, your class book. Have a look. And please tell me what do you think our lesson is going to talk about today? As I told you last session, our next reading lesson is going to talk about one of the greatest scholars in our Islamic history. Can you remember? Yeah, okay. Today we're going to talk about one of the greatest scholars in our Islamic history who was called Ibn al-Haytham. Yes. Ibn al-Haytham, one of the greatest, greatest scholars in our Islamic history. As usual, we're going to listen, read, and following at the same time. Are you ready? But before starting, we're going to read our questions first. Yeah. What was Ibn al Haytham? Where and when was he born? Again, what was Ibn al Haytham? Where and when and when was he born? Now, who can remember what are we going to do? We're going to first thing we're going to listen, follow, and we're going to read. Okay. We're going first of all, we're going to read for paragraph number one to till we can answer our two questions. What was Ibn Haytham and where and when was he born? Are you ready? Three, two, one. Track 11. Pupils book, unit 11, page 112. Reading. Ibn Al Haytham. Ibn al-Haytham and his world. One of the greatest Arab scientists in history was Ibn al-Haytham. He was born in Basra, Iraq, 1,050 years ago. This was a very exciting time in the Islamic world. There were huge libraries in many cities and thousands of scholars studied science, mathematics, and languages. Islamic caliphates took over many countries around the Mediterranean. Food from the Arab world, sugar, oranges, and coffee, arrived in Europe for the first time. Now, we're going to answer our two questions. Now, here is another chance to have a look and answer what was Ibn Haytham and where and when was he born. Let's start to find our answer. What was Ibn Haytham? I'll give you 15 seconds till you can answer. Yes, Ibn Haytham was a greatest Arab scientist. Yeah, he was a greatest Arab scientist. Okay, who can tell me when and where he was born? Where he was born and when was he born? Let's see. Yes, he was born in Basra in Iraq when Yes, 1,050 years ago. Excellent, guys. Let's go to paragraph number two and three. Yes, we're going to listen to paragraph number two and paragraph number three. But before that, we're going to know the questions. We're going to find 
their answers where did Ibn al-Haytham move to? the second question what were two of his favorite subjects? let's check our answer while we are listening and reading are you ready? three two one moving to Cairo Ibn al-Haytham moved to Cairo and he became an important man he worked with the Caliph al-Haykam he was a teacher and he taught the sons of the most important families in Cairo he wrote more than 50 books and he worked in many different sciences studying optics his most important book is the book of optics it's about what lenses mirrors and magnifying glasses do with light he did experiments with light and he wrote about the results optics was one of his favorite subjects throughout his life yes now I think you got the answer but before we have to have another look where did Ibn al-Haytham move to? what were two of his favorite subjects? let's check hmm who can help me to find the first question where did Ibn al-Haytham move to? yes Ibn al-Haytham yes right you are totally right Ibn al-Haytham moved to Cairo yeah where is Cairo? Cairo is in Egypt excellent guys let's go to another question what were two of his favorite subjects? I think you're, it's so easy to find it check this paragraph and you're going to find it in an easy way yeah yes yes right optics was one of his favorite subjects but there's here only one and you mr samah you told us that there are two yes you are completely right we're going to listen to the next paragraph and we're going to try to find the answer are you ready three but before that we're going to read the other questions three two one yes what was Ibn al-Haytham's most important discovery what was Ibn al-Haytham's most important discovery let's check we were going to listen follow and read at the same time three two one and remember you're going to tell me the second his favorite subject studying medicine another of his favorite subjects was medicine at this time scientists in the Islamic world were making many important medical discoveries Ibn al-Haytham's most important discovery was about our eyes before his work people thought that light came out of our eyes like a torch Ibn al-Haytham realized that light went into our eyes from the world at first people didn't believe him now we know that he was right yes let's see our first question what was his second favorite subject hmm I'm waiting for your answer hmm yes it was medicine amazing guys okay let's go to another question what was 
Ibn al-Haytham's most important discovery. Let's check. I think it's so easy. Look, Ibn al-Haytham's most important discovery was our eyes. Yeah, great. Now, we're going to listen to this paragraph. But before that, we have to read the next question. What did he use his mathematical skills to study? Hmm, it's so easy, you know. Math is so important and we use it in our daily life. But we will see how was Ibn al Haytham was brilliant and amazing to use his mathematical skills to study. Let's start. Are you ready? Ready, steady, go. Studying mathematics. Ibn al Haytham was also a brilliant mathematician. He used his mathematical skills to study the planets and the moon. Because he was so good at mathematics, he often worked as the caliph's engineer. He helped the caliph build important buildings. Amazing! We have we had great scholar like that in our history. Let's see what did he use his mathematical skills skills to study. Let's check. Hmm, I think it's so easy. Yes, to study the planets. Yeah, to study the planets and the moon. Amazing. He is an excellent, he was an excellent scholar. So, we have to move to the next paragraphs. So, please. We're going to listen to the last two paragraphs. But before that, we're going to... Yes, right. We're going to read the questions till we can find the answer for them. The first question is, what did President Nasser of Egypt decide to do? What did President Nasser of Egypt decide to do? The second question is What has been done to honor Ibn al Haytham's and his work? What has been done to honor Ibn al Haytham and his work? Now, are you ready to listen to the last two paragraphs? And after that, we're going to answer the, uh, the last two questions. Three, An amazing two, project. one. At that time in Egypt, there were a lot of floods. Every year, the River Nile flooded, and it caused a lot of problems. Ibn al-Haytham wanted to build a dam across the River Nile to stop the flooding. He made lots of plans, but in the end, he decided it wasn't possible. A thousand years later, technology was much more advanced. President Nasser of Egypt decided to build a dam across the River Nile. And now, there is a dam at exactly the same point where Ibn al-Haytham wanted to build his dam. After 1,000 years, Ibn al-Haytham's dream became a reality. Yes, right. Let's answer the first question because now I think the answer will be much, will be very clear. What did President Nasser of Egypt decide to do? Hmm. I think 
we have brilliant students are going to find it in an easy way hmm yes this is the answer president nas president nasser decided to yeah build a dam across the river yes yes nasser of egypt decided to build a dam across the river nile amazing answer so we have last question we're going to read and answer after listening what has been done to honor Ibn al-Haytham and his work? Yes, he deserves that. Let's listen and we're going to answer the last question through the last paragraph. Three, two, one. Remembering Ibn al-Haytham. Ibn al-Haytham died in 1040 Common Era. For hundreds of years, his work was forgotten. Now, people think of him as one of the greatest scientists in history. To honor him and his work, there is a crater on the moon with his name. There is an asteroid with his name too. They are both good ways to remember this great man. Amazing. Let's check our question again. What has been done to honor Ibn al-Haytham and his work? To honor Ibn al-Haytham, to honor Ibn al-Haytham and his work, there is a crater on the moon with his name. Yes, amazing. And there is an asteroid with his name too. We are very proud that we have such a great scholar in our Islamic history. So, what did we learn from this lesson? For me, I have been told that our Islamic history has a lot of scholars and great scholars. One of them was Ibn al-Haytham and I'm very, very proud of my Islamic history. And now, we're going at the end of this lesson. We have to have a gift from Mr. Samah, which is we're going to have homework. Yeah, let's see. 114 is our homework i know you are brilliant students you're going to answer it easily yeah page 114 is homework the first question is some about some questions about how we have what we have read and listened the third question about you're going to write the words in the correct lists and i know i'm sure that you are clever students and you're going to find the answers in an easy way and as we have been told before we're going to read the questions and we're going to find the answers through our keyword is here in the questions this is mr sameh thank you very much for listening and watching our lesson and i'm happy to be together again wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi